Hello, mother. Greetings, child. Welcome home. The chief and I slipped into the booth across from her, and I smiled as my eyes roamed over Five Star Diner. It felt like it had been ages since I sat in my mother's favorite booth, when it had literally been just over a month. The trip from Cedar Falls had been mostly uneventful, unless you counted arguing with the rental kiosk girl at the airport, and the 45-minute drive it took us to get to Asheville. Even Chief had been eerily quiet, until we pulled into town and his jaw hit the floor. Asheville, as it was, preparing for Christmas was nothing short of miraculous. How was your trip? She wore an evil grin on her face. Mother knew I hated flying. I was waiting for a charge to show up on my credit card for destroying the armrests of seat 15C. When white-knuckling them didn't alleviate the stress, I may have inadvertently made the metal a little malleable with magic. Uneventful. I'm sure. She grinned and looked at the chief. I'm sure Mile High Club thoughts were running through her oversexed brain as she leered. Dot? I looked up and saw Jenny heading for our table. I waved frantically, grateful to see my most favorite waitress in the universe. Jenny had been 17 when she started working at the diner. That was nearly 40 years ago. Her blonde ponytail had long turned gray, and her stick-thin figure had thickened. But she was still pretty, and I imagined would be for years to come. Jenny was human, but ageless in character. I got up from my seat on the edge of the booth and hugged her when she got close enough. I didn't think you'd be back this soon. She laughed as she pulled back, looking me up and down. Yeah, I'm stealing some Ashvillians to take back with me. They need any waitresses? She winked to let me know she was joking. Had she been serious, I would have given her a job at the bookstore in a heartbeat. Jenny was more than a waitress. Jenny had been there for most of my life, and when things got difficult, she was always there to lend an ear or a bit of advice. Sure. Call a moving truck. I have work for you. Nah, Dave wouldn't let me go alone, and I don't want to move with him. I sat back down. Miss Blackwell, would you care for your usual tea? Jenny went into full waitress mode, knowing better than to treat my mother familiarly. It made me want to slap her sometimes. Pretty sure someone had shoved the words prim and proper in the dictionary to describe my mother. Please, Jennifer. And who's this? She turned her attention on Chief. This is my boyfriend, Bill. Bill? Jenny. Boyfriend, huh? She reached out her hand and shook Chief's. He's the chief of police in the town I moved to, so behave yourself, I told her with a laugh. He handcuff you yet? No, and we need to have a serious discussion about that. I turned it to him and winked at him enjoying the lovely shade of crimson his cheeks had turned. My mother even cackled. Hi, Jenny, he said shyly. What can I get you to drink? What is a witch's brew? He pointed at the menu. Cream soda float. Huh, I'll try one. Usual dot? Please. I'll be right back. She smiled as she walked away. I swear, how you get so enamored with the help in these places. Relax, mother. I've known her for 40 years. It's your own fear of human interaction talking. I fear nothing, child. Is that a spider on the booth behind you? She gasped and spun, turning back toward me very slowly. I strengthened my shields, just in case, and perused the menu, trying not to chuckle. Daughter? Yes, mother. You are an ungrateful, horrible child. I love you too, Mother. Chief just chuckled. How's the food here? Any recommendations? It's on par with herbs. Stay away from the meatloaf, though. Not good? Really good. Just think Nestor uses it as a front to get rid of bodies. Maybe a few centuries ago, dear. The health department regularly inspects his beef after the rumor mill refused to let that one go.